folks, and welcome back to another edition of LC's Coaches Show. I'm Brad Welburn. Glad to be back with you again. And if you couldn't tell already, it's homecoming week. Yay, decorations and things. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're here once again to talk with uh, Coach Dunn, and we'll get into that homecoming stuff in uh, just a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. But uh, first, wanted to talk about uh, game last week. Coach, first of all, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us again. Uh, it's always good to talk to you anytime but especially after a win uh, like that against Bellhaven so I guess first initial thoughts uh, on the game as a whole. Well, Brad first of all it, it is good to, to get a victory anytime you win it's good and uh, it, even your mistakes feel a whole lot better after a victory than they do in defeat and uh, everything seems to be magnified in, in defeat but I thought our guys played extremely well like you and I talked before the show started um, no turnovers and, and they had five. So when, when you look at the bottom line is when you turn the ball over, you don't have uh, as many opportunities to win. And, and uh, you know, we, we took care of the football. And I thought that uh, with that said, as, as good as that quarterback from Bellhaven is, with the five takeaways, it, it helped seal the victory for us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into the, some of the details here, starting with the uh, with the offense. We talked about it last week. Uh, you guys changed some things up uh, during the practice week. Wanted to try to get some more tempo, some more flow, get into a more of a rhythm like you talked about. And uh, for the first quarter or so, it seemed like maybe trying to – kind of adjusting to that, but certainly that second half, I mean, you guys seemed like you were clicking on all cylinders. Well, I really I really thought we did some good things in the first half. We, uh, you know, we, our first drive, you know, we're third and medium, and we throw a slant, uh, and, and uh, Lawrence Williams uncharacteristically drops the ball. Mm -hmm. if, if he catches the football, that first drive is sustained, and, and I think we potentially go down and score. And... Um, you know, so it's those kinds of things that you that you talk about all, but it's a part of the game. You know, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna have drops, and and if what we talked about as a coaching staff is let's just continue to do what we do for four quarters. It's 60 minutes. Don't press the panic button if you get down, which you know we were down at half, 20 to 14, mm -hmm. and and uh, we just continued to stay within our game plan and. and and do what we do, and and eventually it, it uh, the separation took place there in the second half. Yeah, uh, you mentioned being down at halftime. Uh, Bell Haven got a, a crazy scramble touchdown with no time left in the, in the half to to take the lead, uh, twenty to fourteen. So a lot of times things happen where momentum that that's a that can be a big thing. But you guys uh, came out first play was almost a touchdown. Uh, it was Lawrence again on yeah. the slant. Uh, so what did you say to the, to the team at halftime to say, hey, let's, let's move on, let's keep going and do what we're doing? Well, I, I just think we, we didn't really do a whole lot different, uh, differently at halftime in terms of adjustments. We just talked about what we, what we worked on, our plan, it's there, we just need to execute. Mm -hmm. And um, that same play is, the, is one of the plays that Lawrence – Drop yeah. in the first drive, but he catches it in mm -hmm. that drive, and and had he caught it in the in the first drive of the game, it, the same result. Right. Have, but he did. He made up for the the drop, made a great catch, great run down to the one. We're able to put it in, and uh, really took the momentum back from Bellhaven at that point, and and uh, kicked off a solid half for us. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing in the second half that we saw a little bit more of. Uh, it, feels kind of weird calling it a wildcat package just because we are the wildcats but that's kind of the, the terminology used around football is where you insert a, a new quarterback can can do some more things with his feet and we saw that on that one really nice drive from from dre well it's a it's an interesting uh package in that it's a it's a mixer for for the defense it gives them a different look mm -hmm. than what they typically are seeing with our base offense and when you put an athlete like deandre in the game uh, he can do so many things with his feet that that cause um, defenses issues, mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to uh, give an un, uh, give them the, give the opponent give Bellhaven an unbalanced line, and we were able to run the uh, quarterback power uh, two or three times with success, and then the uh, the speed sweep we had some success with out of the formation, 
and so we we let our athletes get in there and make some plays in a different look that Bellhaven had had not seen, and I think it was a good mixer for us uh, away from our base offense that they weren't prepared for, and I think it it helped. Uh, Give us some momentum for sure in the mm -hmm. game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, real quick, a couple things about the defense. Uh, when when you look at the numbers, um, 600 and something yards allowed. But you look at the scoring; they only had 30 points. And the last drive, uh, that last touchdown was kind of garbage time, if you want to call it that. But the bigger thing, back to what we've seen earlier in the year: five interceptions, five takeaways by our defense. Huge. I mean, that was we we. I think we lead the conference in takeaways at this we're point. Up, we're up near the top for sure. And um, you know, the last two we we really uh, had been minus in the takeaway column, and that's in when two teams are pretty evenly matched. That's that many times is the difference in the game, and we'd seen that certainly against uh, Harden Simmons and against Sol Ross is that we didn't take advantage of our opportunities, turned it over in some inopportune times. We took care of the football, and uh, when you can do that, and and still uh, as good as that offense is, that quarterback is very special. Uh, Bell Haven is, you know, they've moved the ball on everybody yeah. they played, and uh, you know they're very talented in the skill position. So for us to hold them to 30 points, I don't know, um, you know, they they've moved the ball on most everybody they've played very successfully, and. And that, that guy's special. They've got some really good receivers. But uh, I thought offensively we played a, a good game and, and, and took advantage of our opportunities, put it in the end zone. Coach McLaughlin really did a good job uh, calling the offense the other night, staying with what we do. We were able to run the ball effectively. And, and uh, you know, anytime we can establish the run and get four or five yards of pop and stay in second and – manageable third mm -hmm. and manageable then we we have a chance brad yeah uh we talked about special teams a few times uh over the past few weeks but i uh, wanted to mention this because uh charles was named asc special teams player of the week which is a very exciting uh thing as well well charles has been automatic on mm -hmm. pats this year seven for seven the other night with a long field goal that thing may have been good from 60 yeah. i mean he, yeah he uh he hammered it and we you know it it's with him, you're never out of field goal range. If if you can get, if you can get inside the 40 yard line, there's a good opportunity for us to get points. And I probably need to do a better job of getting points when we have an opportunity when we're in the red zone and and let, letting him kick more. But he, he's done a great guy. He's bounced back from his injury. Mm -hmm. He's healthy and really kicked the ball. He he's still not where I know he would like to be right. with his kickoffs because early in the year he was kicking those things uh, that, yeah. in the end zone and out of the end zone and. He's still getting back uh, to 100%. He's about 85 now with that that uh, that plant ankle, mm -hmm. but he's just gotten better and better. And excited for him that he was able to receive that honor. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I guess let's uh, move on into uh, this week. Uh, not only is it homecoming with the decorations and stuff, but it is uh, is senior senior night. It is a rivalry game. It is uh, as many things you can have in one game. It is uh, ETBU's coming to town, and uh, I guess before we get into the, some of the game stuff, uh, take a take a few minutes and talk about because this senior class. I mean, they they are some really special guys. Yeah, they they are. It's a it's a special group when you think about what what they've been able to uh, accomplish here and what they've been able to um, overcome in terms of adversity and continue to to uh, keep Louisiana college football, um, you know, in, in the conversation in, in terms of being one of the top programs in the, in the American Southwest Conference. And, and uh, boy, this, this has been a class that is, has led through some, some difficulties well, as well. Last year's season was not what we all had hoped it would be. And, and those guys continue to really battle and, and I came through, and like I've talked about all year, the off season they had, and and still a lot of football left to be played. This is this is one of the games that uh, they pointed to from mm -hmm. last season that you know was a disappointing uh, game last year, and and this has been a, a a game that's been pointed to on the schedule for for a whole year, and I think our guys will be prepared, and and uh, we will depend on our seniors to uh, to uh, 
battle for that border claw. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so yes, and it, it will be a battle. I was I was looking at uh, some uh, scores from the past few years, and if you take out two outlier games in like 2010 and 2003, the point differential between us and ETBU has been a touchdown, uh, win or loss. Uh, we we kind of had their number the past few years before last year, but they're a pretty good team this year. They're 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 got a pretty. Uh, Pretty talented offense. Well, yeah, sure. they're very explosive offensively. Scored a lot of points. I think them and Maryland Baylor were one and two in the nation in terms of offensive production. And and uh, you know the, their young head coach uh, has has really um, prided himself in, in his up tempo offense and and uh, really you know scored a lot of points. Scored a lot of points late in some games and and uh, but. They are explosive, and uh, but I think the thing that's gotten overshadowed for them is their D. They play good defense as well, and uh, you know they're nationally ranked, and they, they'll come in here with a a strong six and six and one record, and and it'll be a it'll be a challenge. Is it is it the tempo that is their biggest uh, selling point offensively, or well, I think their tempo gets people, but uh, their weapons too. Mm -hmm. I mean, their quarterback manages the offense extremely well. They got a transfer from. From a, a bigger college, and and he's come in and and really done a nice job to learning their offense, managing their system, and uh, they've got some explosive players, and uh, they do a really good job with their run pass options, taking advantage of what the defense gives them, and uh, so they can put defenses in a bind with that with those run pass combos, and then again you match that with a with a solid defense and. And uh, they've won some big games this this year, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so looking at kind of what uh, what it is we're going to have to do to, to get the claw back to where it belongs in Pineville, um, is it is it for offense? Is it just a matter of continuing kind of what we started against Bellhaven? Or again, I, uh, Brad, it's pretty simple, and it gets down to the old cl the the coaching cliches. I mean, it really is about. Taking care of the football, taking advantage of opportunities, not turning it over, and and um, uh, uh, you know times when when you know you cannot put your defense in bad position. You can't give them short fields. Mm -hmm. You got to make them drive the distance, and uh, all that uh, plays into it. You know the kicking game and and us managing field position, and um, I really believe that that. You know we're gonna we're gonna continue to get a week better. I think we've um, this week we improved. We expect to get a, a week better, and uh, got a lot of football left to play. This is a big game. This is one that that um, we look forward to playing for okay. sure. All right, uh, homecoming. A lot of stuff going on uh, around uh, the, really the whole week. Honestly, uh, we've got soccer stuff going on too. Uh, but for the football game and, and the weekend in particular, I mean, what is it that um, that is the number one thing outside of the football game that that need, people need to know about. Well, I think uh, Kathy Overturf, mm -hmm. our alumni director, I want to give a shout out to her. She's done a fantastic job in, in uh, really engaging our alums since she's been here, and uh, the fact that she has put together a, a an outstanding program for Friday and Saturday with. Uh, with homecoming, we just we, we hope that our alums will come back home, and uh, there's no place like home, and we just want to support everything that that Kathy has done and, and put together, and the hard work of so many uh, in support of homecoming week is is definitely um, a must, and and uh, our alums are so important to our future, so to to have the kind of activities scheduled big golf tournament on friday still looking for a few teams there hopefully we can we can get some people excited about uh 2016 homecoming yeah uh one of the things uh, that just popped into my mind as well is we'll be uh part of the homecoming stuff is the new inductees into the hall of fame we have uh three going in this year mr al sandahall mr jim morgans and mr james hale uh, a couple of football players and baseball players, so uh, that'll be a, that'll be a cool deal to add their plaques uh, with along the rest of them. Exciting to add them to the class, certainly deserving. All of these have been very successful in their own right professionally, but 
uh, not only being great athletes here, but have had, 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 have had stellar careers outside of playing here. So uh, really a tremendous honor to add those um, three to the, to the homecoming uh, agenda as Hall of Famers for sure. All right, well, I guess that's going to about do it for us this week. Uh, if you're looking for more details on all the stuff going on uh, with Homecoming, uh, be sure to check the website, lacollege.edu. Uh, they have pamphlets and, and, and T-shirts and all kind of stuff. we got a parade going on this week. So uh, make sure you check that out and f find out where you need Brad, to be, when you need to be. I think we have something here to, to yeah, this show. Is, I guess this is the, the pamphlet. This is one of the Homecoming pamphlets, Louisiana College, Homecoming 2016. There's no place like home. October the 27th through the 29th. Get your homecoming t-shirt. These are uh, really nice. Uh, got the Wildcat head on the front and, and the nice logo on the back. Just $10 so you can order your t-shirt. It's a blue out game, so we want everybody to wear the blue uh, homecoming t-shirt uh, at the game on Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, wear your blue. I'll, I think we, we have, have a t-shirt there. Look, we, we have, get this. Can we show this here to the... Oh yeah, this is this is it. Okay, so here's the back. It's got the uh, nice homecoming shirt. There's the back the of it. Thing on the front, and then the, and then the uh, wildcat, wildcat on the front. There you go. Everybody needs to get a get a blue T-shirt for for homecoming. This will be blue out night on Saturday night. Be perfect for the blue out. There you go. All right, lacollege.edu for the full schedule. Be sure to uh, check lcwildcats.net, our athletic website, for uh, links for the stream, audio, stats, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, thanks to uh, Jeff Young and Convergence Media once again for making this show possible. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on Saturday, Friday, Thursday, all weekend long for homecoming. And uh, we'll see you again next week for sure. For Coach Dunn, I'm Brad Welburn, Wildcat Media Sports. We'll see you next time. Let's go get the claw.